Hey, drag fans, please listen up. I'm Alaska. And my name is Willem. And we are the hosts of Race, race Chaser, Chaser, the premier and preeminent RuPaul's Drag Race recap podcast. And if you aren't listening to this podcasting behemoth yet, start right now. Because it's 2023 and we have weekly coverage of the all new episodes from the season 15 of RuPaul's Drag Race. Every Wednesday, we will discuss, dissect, and, and disseminate, disseminate all of the juiciest moments, wildest runway looks, and the shadiest reality TV twists of the best show on television drag race <laughs> race chaser with alaska and willem is the ultimate backstage pass for both drag obsessives and new fans alike so don't wait find us on your podcast apps and listen check out new episodes of race chaser every wednesday and friday wherever you get your podcasts thank you Welcome to The Waves. This is our Golden Bachelor podcast, episode eight, by myself or with someone. Every week we're talking about the latest episode of the newest installment of The Bachelor franchise and 72-year-old Gary's quest for love. I'm Shayna Roth, senior producer at Slate. And I'm Laura Stasi, host of the podcast Dating While Gray. Fantasy suites are here. These fantasy. fantasy. These are a major <laughs> part of The Bachelor franchise. And honestly, every season this continues, it reminds me of just how immature our culture still is when it comes to sex. I mean, and, and this iteration of The Bachelor is no different. I mean, you could feel host Jesse Palmer's cringe when Gary is talking about sex. This is easily your biggest week yet. By far. Because there's overnight dates. Right. There's fantasy suites. I mean, when you hear that, what comes to mind? Many people will be looking at that as, do people my age uh, still knock boots and, and uh, have a good time behind closed doors? I mean, <laughs> your parents, uh, are you still feeling like uh, mom and dad come mm. down the stairs with a little extra spring in their step? TMI. TMI, Gary. I may be having Let's that kind of day. Let's keep this on you. Let's just okay. keep this on you, can we? <laughs> Yes. However, can we give him a little bit of a break? Because I thought Jesse's reactions were so normal from a generational point of view. I mean, yes. nobody wants to think about their parents or their grandparents having sexual needs or desires. And it is weird that Gary took it there. <laughs> well, and I have to say, other than describing it as knocking boots, because honestly, nobody talks like that unless you're in a locker room. I thought Gary did a good job of talking with Jesse about sex and sexual intimacy, which makes his completely juvenile reaction to Leslie's question a little later on even more confounding. Very true. And it did seem like, okay, maybe we're going to have like an insightful <laughs> episode of Fantasy Suites. And that didn't turn out to be the case. And honestly, I thought Gary was... A little bit too chill going into the <laughs> fantasy suites. He seemed to very openly and just very nonchalantly say, I'm in love with two women. I'm down to the last two most incredible women, Leslie and Teresa. We will have the potential opportunity to spend time that is unfiltered, the closed door time. We can ask the difficult questions that are strictly between two people and also have the, the opportunity to be physically intimate with each other. I'm in love with both Leslie and Teresa. It's going to be an incredibly difficult decision to make. I hope that the clarity will come. Like, sir, maybe not act like this is normal, especially when we're going into the part of the show. There's not going to be cameras and there's all these expectations around sex. And it seems as though these fantasy suites happen very, very close to yes, each other. They did. I mean, it was like the next day, according to the way they cut it. So, yeah, I'm not sure Gary was being completely honest with either himself or the viewers because he was just... Like, hey, this is no big deal. But then later on, it's like he has supposedly hasn't had sex in, quote unquote, a long time, which we have no idea what a long time means. It could have been, you know, the week before the show started, for all we know. And before we get down to the, the boot knocking, as you <laughs> mentioned, and as Gary calls it, 
So he sits down with Jesse and he's going through his feelings about Leslie and Teresa. And I thought he was doing a lot of I talking. I was still getting the feeling that he doesn't really know either of these women. They just make him feel warm and fuzzy. This was later magnified on his date with Teresa. But at this point in the show, before he starts these fantasy suites, how are you interpreting Gary and where he's at and his feelings about these women? Oh, it's so hard to know what's going on in Gary's mind. Uh, Jesse asks him, you know, can you see Leslie as a life partner? And Gary said he thought he could. But if we noticed, he was when he was nodding his head. See, I'm all about the body language, especially when it comes to Gary's head, when somebody asks him about the love word. And he sort of nodded his head in a slanted way, not emphatically up and down. And it kind of reminded me of when Faith's son said, you know, do you love my mom? And he kind of twisted his head all around before answering it. So I don't know. And then with you know, Teresa, the two buzzwords are safety and security, which yawn. It sounds like, you know, a metal detector kind of a thing before you go into a school. So, yeah, warm and fuzzy. What does that mean, Gary? Give us some substance. Yeah. I love that you brought up body language because there was a clip that they showed from the hometowns of Gary and Leslie. And when I watched it again, I was like, oh, my God, he's not choosing Leslie. And now I have proof and proof in like very, very heavy air quotes. But they he says, Gary says, I love you to Leslie. And then they make out and they're up against this like really stoned brick wall (laughs) situation. And he doesn't protect her head. And she knocks her head into one of these rocks. Okay, (laughs) clearly not hard, but her head is hitting very like rough rocks he doesn't protect her head and i was like oh body language gary you're not protecting her head i don't think you care as much about her as you think you do it's not going to be leslie case Uh, that's hilarious i think that's (laughs) a very astute observation but you know what maybe that's what he thinks what knocking boots means maybe it means knocking heads i don't know (laughs) (laughs) well let's talk about the the boot knocking leslie gets the first fantasy suite uh she's the first one and then gary seems to confirm this later on when he says i've been with with leslie and now i'm gonna go on my date with Teresa." so leslie is the first one up they go repelling and leslie hates it and it seems that they keep playing into this idea of gary being a sort of protector Like, I feel safe because Gary is here is something I've heard from multiple women, especially Leslie, multiple times. I don't know that I actually find Gary to be that reassuring of a presence, but I could be wrong. Though overall, I find Gary to be kind of patronizing. Did you have total fun today? I had such a good time. I can't believe that we did that. I know. The concern that I really have to be aware of is that I want to make sure that I'm unbiased because I think she's got the rose-colored glasses on and and admittedly I do too but but we're really talking about spending the rest of our lives together and I want to make sure that she's not forgetting that that's what we're getting ourselves into. I agree. Well, first of all, if Gary's so protective, why is Leslie the one closest to the waterfall as they're going down the rocks? And it sounds like this is the first time she's ever done this, where I think the way Gary looked very comfortable with it, maybe he's done this before. So how mean are these producers? We're going to go repelling. And it's very steep. We're in Costa Rica. And I loved Leslie's line when she said, you know, I was hoping we were going to go zip lining, but okay, because Costa Rica is known for zip lining. So I do question why they chose that activity, why she was the closest to the water. And his comments, too, when he's talking, you know, the debrief to the producers are maybe not a debrief, but a pre-brief, talking about her supposed rose-colored glasses. Who's the one with rose-colored glasses, Gary? Is it just Leslie? So yes, I found that very patronizing. Yeah, I mean, that was like really the whole part that I just kept thinking about throughout the episode, where he's talking about 
him making the ultimate decision and the way he talks about the relationships that he has with these women. And with Leslie, he's talking about how she needs to not forget that this is all about marriage. It just all felt really odd to me and just an odd way of going into these dates with these women when it should just be about growing the relationship, not about necessarily, I think at least, focusing on who's going to win and who's getting marriage and like this eye on the prize kind of a thing. Well, absolutely. And, you know, let's talk about that conversation that Gary did have with uh, Leslie. He prompted her, you know, we haven't talked about the hard things or, you know, we haven't really. So she says to him a completely legitimate question. When was the last time you had sex? I had an observation Mm -hmm. today, and um, I'm going to hear what you think about this, but you haven't asked me any of the hard questions in quite a while. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, is she just giving me a pass on some things, or what is it? Okay, I have a question for you. When's the last time you had sex? Um, you said you want me what, to ask her a question. Well, I need to clarify. Are you talking about by myself or with someone? <laughs> with someone. <laughs> <laughs> well, like months or years. Oh, or... a long time. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mine's been a year. Okay. Yeah. He acts like he's 13 years old and somebody brought up sex. Hee hee, giggle, giggle. And then, plus he never answered the question. A long time. She volunteered. And then and then he also does not ask her, well, hey, when was the last time you had sex? She volunteers that it's been about a year. And so then he quickly, so, you know, from what we see, it's quickly changing the subject to where are we going to live or how's this going to work out? But people, if you, <laughs> if you are talking about making a life with someone, it is completely legitimate to find out how important is sex to you in a relationship. How do you define sex? How important is it for you to be sexually monogamous with each other? I mean, these are all very legitimate questions. And is it that just scary? It's sex isn't important to him. That's something Leslie should know. Or is he just too embarrassed to talk about it? Or does he just naturally assume if we're going to be married? Yes, we're going to have sex. I don't know. And then this whole thing about talking about where we're going to live. And she does say she does not want to leave Minnesota for good, but she's hoping they can work things out. But he doesn't reveal his cards. He doesn't say anything about, okay, yeah, I agree. It would be fun to go back and forth. And then this whole death do us part bit for him, to me, that was telling that that's how Gary looks at it. Not like, Let's talk about how we can make each other happy. Let's talk about how we can have a mutually fulfilling relationship so that we can be together for the rest of our lives. For him, it's just like, okay, if we're going to be married, yeah, we'll stay together till death do us part. And I thought that Leslie kind of felt bad about that. She said she hasn't had that and she wants it. But to me, it's like, okay, she has had two divorces. We don't know the circumstances of those divorces. Maybe at some point she felt it was more important to be personally fulfilled and she wasn't getting that. Well, again, we don't know, but there was no talk about how can we be personally fulfilled in a marriage? It's just like, okay, if we're going to be married, we're going to stick together until we die, until one of us dies. Well, and I think part of Gary's, I think Gary is going about this in a slightly immature way. And I think part of that might be because wasn't his wife, his first love or his high school love, And then they were married for a long time. I mean, this is a guy who who doesn't seem to have had a lot of serious relationships. And I think Leslie has one over on him because she's been married more than once, but also because she's clearly dated more. She's gone out more. Um, You know, she said that the last time she had sex was a year ago. Obviously, we don't know, you know, if it was a serious relationship or what. But Gary being like a long time, I'm pretty sure he said it's been a while because it's been longer than her. You know, I think that he's seeing all of this in a very simplistic sense because he doesn't have that experience. But you know what? From what we can tell. We don't know. And actually, he could have been 
he could have had a sexless marriage for all we know. We don't know. There was something that got brought up at the very beginning of the episode that I am now, it's clouded everything I think about Gary. And he makes the comment that he retired at age 55. And then now 17 years later, he's on The Golden Bachelor. And so I'm thinking, okay, wait a second. He retired at age 55. Was he actually working like a consultant or something? Because we also know his wife continued working for 11 more years, retired, and then died two months later. So reti- So I'm thinking, okay, Gary. What have you been up to, Gary? What have you been, what have you been doing? Right, and how did that affect your relationship with your wife? Was she like, okay, you go ahead and do whatever you want. I'm going to continue to work so that we can you know, build our dream home. And so, yeah, so he might have a simplistic view of things like, I don't know. The man gets to do whatever he wants to do. I mean, I don't want to put that on him, but I just feel like his experiences now that I know about this very early retirement thing, because, you know, back in 2006, the average retirement age was 60. So he was even ahead of that. I just feel like, I don't know. I really, I really hope Leslie doesn't get chosen because I don't think this is a good match for everything that we've been talking about and more. You know, and she says, you know, again, body language. She says, I'm in, I'm ready. But she's shaking her head. The The motion is more no than yes. So, yeah, I mean, is Gary a traditional man wanting a traditional kind of a marriage? That is... I think the question that Gary also has to figure out for himself, because he does agree to go to the fantasy suites with Leslie. They both say, yes, let's do this. Let's continue. And then Gary tells Leslie she may be the one. Trista gave me a piece of advice. Really? She said, Gary, you have to find the woman that you can't live without, not the one that you can live with. It's beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So... I think you're the one. I think you're that one. And I said out loud, God damn it, Gary. <laughs> you have learned nothing. I just, as soon as he said that, I was like, oh, no. I mean, just, God damn it, man. You need to stop promising these women stuff. This is the sort of thing that you were crying about last episode. Nobody's making you say this stuff. <laughs> Knock it off. Didn't it remind you of that meatloaf song, I'll Love You Till the End of Time? Yes. Where's it, I'm yes. like, okay, does he just want to get into Leslie's pants? Is that what he said? I don't know, but like clearly... You didn't need to say that to get into Leslie's pants. I mean, like, you guys were clearly having a good time. You know, the night was going to go how it was going to go. You didn't have to tell her that she may be the one. And I just, based on what we've talked about before, like, I don't think she's going to be the one. And when they woke (gasps) up, it didn't seem like either one of them thought that they were the one. Well, I definitely think Gary had a better time than Leslie did. I have to say, go back. I kept freezing it and then rewinding and freezing it when they were sitting there drinking coffee in bed. At one point, they kiss, and then she turns her face away, and she looks, I can't tell if she's disgusted or, I I just can't, but it was definitely not, I'm a happy camper. And I would love to have known what actually went on. Maybe it wasn't a mutually pleasurable experience. But then in the debrief, Gary gets all flustered and says, you know, it's none of anybody's business what we did. And I'm thinking, oh, right, right. So he doesn't want to tell because the fact that he got mad about it. I don't know, Gary. He seemed real defensive. And when they were talking about it and being like, oh, our night was really great. We laughed a lot. I'm like, ah, I mean, laughter is good, it's great, but not when Leslie's over here looking like she just had something sour. (laughs) I just, the vibes were not immaculate. The vibes were not vibing between the two of them the next morning. Leslie looked like she just wanted to like grab her shoes and get the hell out of there. It was just. Speaking of shoes, she describes Gary as an old shoe. He says, comfortable. What was that? <laughs> That's worse than safe and secure. It's like, okay. Terrible. If I love someone, do I want them to describe me as safe and secure or as comfortable as an old shoe? Come on. Especially because, like, there's other, like, and, like 
an old sweater, I feel like, would be better. Or a, a warm like, sweater. Are, <laughs> swarm sweater. I don't know. But like a shoe? <laughs> are you kidding me? An old shoe that's kind of, you know, it's stretched out and doesn't fit anymore. It's all saggy. It's probably got holes in it. Like, I just. <laughs> all right. This episode of The Waves is brought to you by Planned Parenthood. Today, one in three women are blocked from getting abortion care in their home state. Over the past year, lawmakers in 22 states and counting have stripped reproductive freedom from nearly 21 million women, plus more trans and non-binary people. Across the country, politicians are pushing to control bodies, lives, and futures. There's just no end in sight. They want a nationwide ban on abortion, and they're also attacking birth control, sex education, care for trans people, and more of our human rights. But Planned Parenthood is fighting to make sure everyone can get the care they need. They'll never back down, and they'll never stop fighting, because everyone deserves sexual and reproductive health care, no matter what. You can join the movement and donate today. Visit PlannedParenthood.org future. Hey, drag fans, please listen up. I'm Alaska. And my name is Willem. And we are the hosts of Race Race Chaser. Chaser. The premier and preeminent RuPaul's Drag Race recap podcast. And if you aren't listening to this podcasting behemoth yet, start right now. Because it's 2023 and we have weekly coverage of the all new episodes from the season 15 of RuPaul's Drag Race. Every Wednesday, we will discuss, dissect, and And disseminate disseminate all of the juiciest moments, wildest runway looks, and the shadiest reality TV twists of the best show on television drag race (laughs) race chaser with alaska and willem is the ultimate backstage pass for both drag obsessives and new fans alike so don't wait find us on your podcast apps and listen check out new episodes of race chaser every wednesday and friday wherever you get your podcasts thank you hi it's kelsey mckinney from normal gossip at long last we are returning for a new season with stories about bachelorette parties and city politics and rental houses gone wrong new episodes will start dropping october 18th but you didn't hear that from me normal gossip from defector and radiotopia can be found wherever you listen to podcasts Hey, this is Mary Harris, host of Slate's daily news podcast, What Next? Slate's mission has always been to cut through the noise, boldly and provocatively. This election season and Supreme Court term are no different. Important coverage like this, though, it would not be possible without the support of our Slate Plus members. So I'm going to invite you to join us with a special offer. You can try your first three months for only 15 bucks. That is five bucks a month for your first three months of uninterrupted ad-free listening on every Slate podcast, member-exclusive episodes and segments of your favorite shows like Amicus and the Political Gap Fest, and unlimited reading on the Slate site. Best of all, you'll be supporting all of Slate's independent journalism and analysis as we make sense of the news like no one else can. Sign up for Slate Plus at slate.com slash podcasts plus. Again, that is three months for only 15 bucks. So sign up now at slate.com slash podcast plus. So that was Leslie and Gary. So then it's Teresa's turn and Teresa gets to go horseback riding. And there was just no chemistry during this ride. I mean, horseback riding, especially when you're going through the jungles and like you can't necessarily ride side by side. It's tricky to talk. But I mean... They just there wasn't even really like any attempts to banter or to talk. And then Gary starts talking to the camera about how he's feeling conflicted. And then he basically just makes the date about his hard choice instead of about his relationship with Teresa. This is an extremely important date for me. So I really want him to focus on us today. So, you know, it is a a big day. It's a this is a tough day. I know. And I really don't. I, I have no roadmap for this. I have yeah. no experience on on how to handle a day like this. That no. dates with two beautiful women and charming women, and oh, it's like, how do I you know. sort that out? I oh gosh, this is so difficult. And I was thinking that maybe that's you were very quiet on the horse. 
And I know that there's so much going through your mind. And I understand. I completely understand. I mean, I think I understand. I wouldn't want to be in your spot. But you have to know how much I care about you, how much I love you. It's terrible. He's wondering what Leslie is doing while he's on this date with poor Teresa, who did he not choose Faith because he knew he was going to have to go horseback riding and he didn't want Faith to show him up on the horse? (laughs) I mean, who knows? But if I'm Teresa, I'm pissed. Yeah. Like, one, you're second. Nobody wants to go second on the fantasy. Amen. Space. They just they just don't. You get this super cringy date. And then when they finally sit down to dinner, Gary's basically like, I'm thinking about Leslie, but I'm going to try my darndest. And then he like, it's just like he's off. He's clearly very off. But what was hilarious to me is that he finally asks Teresa about her career. <laughs> <laughs> it took him how long And he finally is asking her some real questions about her life. Why? Because he needs to distract himself from Leslie and he can't think of anything else to say. Yeah. And I didn't love it when he was like, he asked her about her career. And then one of the first things he said was, you know, when would you be willing to stop this career? Well, keep in mind, he stopped his career a heck of a long time ago. I mean, but I have to say all kudos to Teresa Her story is like so many older women stories. She was a homemaker, then she decided to become a day trader and went into a securities professional. I mean, how impressive is that? Good for her. And I don't like that she said, oh, give me a reason to stop and I'll stop. But let's keep in mind, she's 70 years old. She's put in the time. Let her stop if she thinks that she can find happiness with Gary, although... I don't know. I'm going back. I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm going back to the fact that he retired when he was 55. His poor wife worked basically up until the day she died. So that's just not right. Um, Yeah. And then why didn't Gary talk to Leslie about when she's retiring? Because she's so much younger than Gary. Yeah. I mean, it's weird, his relationship with these women, because I was so excited that he was finally asking her questions about herself, but he wasn't really sharing anything about himself. He seems to be, you know, sort of testing each of these women in different ways. And then the conversation steers back to their dead spouses. (laughs) And it's like, we keep coming back to this. And, but Gary is into it and he's like so shocked about how good their conversation is. And it's just like, then why did you have her come all this way to begin with? If you, if you're so surprised that that she's capable of having a fun conversation, like, well, the thing is, you know, they do talk about their shared relationship history and that they've, but they've both lost spouses to death. Honestly, for me, it's better than rehashing their dates. Like, how, what have before this night? What did Leslie and Gary talk about besides their ATV hot tub date? I don't remember them having any interesting conversations, so... Right. And same with Teresa. They've talked about how great that first date was and her and her birthday suit. And it's like, I get that you guys only have, like, maybe four weeks of shared memories, but why are we constantly going back to that? Like, let's talk about some new stuff. Like, again, I still don't really have a sense of, is Gary willing to move anywhere for these women? Doesn't seem like it. I would say the answer is no. But, you know, all kudos to Teresa. Again, she basically brought up sex first from what we saw. And I loved her reaction to getting the fantasy suite invite. She was all giggly and she was ready. She was so ready. And she communicated that to Gary. I think. Yeah. And so they do go into the fantasy suite. Luckily, it's a different room. A nicer room. With Leslie. Nicer. Kind of a nicer <laughs> room. Kind of a nicer room. And the next morning, I mean, these two seem so much happier and comfortable than we did when we saw Leslie and Gary the next morning. And, of course, Gary has now gone all the way from Leslie to Teresa, and they do this little you-know exchange uh, it was so cringy. Oh, oh, okay. Your cringe is my wow. So <laughs> it was just kind of, 
especially because it's I think the problem with it and why it felt cringy to me is because there's so much baggage attached to these two because she has said that she loves him and he hasn't said it back and even in this moment he's not saying I love you he's just saying you know (laughs) you know and then I'm pretty sure that she said I love you as Gary left and he didn't say it back all of the questions And the uh, trepidation that I had about Teresa was gone in the first hour or hour and a half of conversation. It was incredible. In case I haven't said it, I'm crazy about you. I love you. (laughs) Yeah. And you know how I feel about you. The nice part is, you know. I know. I do. Last night I told her that I loved her. And I told her, when I say this to you, I want you to know that I mean it and I'm saying it from the bottom of my heart. I can't tell you the elation I felt. All right, we got grandkids watching, so we're not gonna go crazy. And it was, I like it. We have a little private moment. We have a little something between us that's important. It's pretty awesome. Okay, so let's let's go back to the next the morning after because I was reminded like 20 years ago a friend of mine was going through a hard time with her husband and they actually separated and their daughter spent the night with us while they like went out to dinner or something to talk about things and they came together the next morning to pick her up and I could tell immediately you've had sex it, there was just <laughs> There was something, I mean, like her hair, I mean, there was just something about it. You could just tell that they had sex. And I felt like Teresa, I don't know what kind of sexual intimacy they had, but I felt like (laughs) Teresa. She was, she was pulsing. Like she was vibing. She was, she was glowing. You could see the estrogen had all just kind of come back. And so I, um... I'm hoping that when he was like, you know how I feel, you know, I'm hoping there was like very honest words uttered in moments of passion that he wanted to reiterate or that maybe he didn't want the audience to know, but maybe he said, it's been you all along. I'm going to pick you. I hope. I hope it's not another one of these things where he's telling Faith that he loves her or that he's telling Leslie, I think you're the one. I really do hope it's sincere. And maybe he didn't hear her. Can we hope that he didn't hear her? (laughs) The next, (laughs) I hope that's what happened because it was, you could tell she was like, "Uh, okay. I gotta keep keep the smile going. But look at that cute little bodysuit she was wearing too. I mean, how adorable! Yes. How adorable! So at the end of all of this, Gary says he's made a decision, and maybe you're right. Maybe it is Teresa, and he told her that she's the one because he had 24 hours away from Leslie and forgot that she existed. He seems to have a little bit of a goldfish syndrome when it comes to these women. But we have to wait two whole weeks. For this finale. So, Laura, what are your predictions? I would have loved if we had seen the daughters meeting the women before the finale. We are led to believe, I think, from that, that his daughters kind of put the kibosh on Leslie because, you know, she says she's ready, but is she? Is more of a Leslie centric comment. I hope it's Teresa. For Teresa's sake, as well as for Leslie's sake, I really hope it is Teresa. But I feel like we know if Teresa's planning to leave New Jersey because they didn't talk about that. No, but I get the impression from Teresa that she will follow this man to the end of the world. She is just so ready to be with somebody And she is so into Gary. I just, every time she's with him, she's just like got these adoring little puppy dog (laughs) eyes. And she just seems to truly love the man so much that I think that she would absolutely go wherever he wanted to go. 24-7? I don't know, (laughs) ma'am. I don't know. Maybe. She just seems so into him. 
But I do. I do think that it is also going to be Teresa. They're just they seem to have the better chemistry the 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 next morning. In general, he keeps coming back to Teresa like she's been a very constant, consistent one for him. He hasn't really had a lot of ups and downs with her, you know, whereas with Leslie, there seems to have been some some tumult in the past. And yeah, I think I think. It's going to be Teresa. Um, I was kind of surprised that he was hyper-focused on marriage and a proposal because I feel like he hadn't really talked about like that aspect of The Bachelor before. And I had been wondering if that was sort of where all this was headed in general or if it was just going to be like, yeah, we're going to be together. What are your thoughts about him saying like, yes, a proposal is nigh? <laughs> I think it shows us how little Gary understands older relationships, for lack of a better word, you know, so many people don't want to remarry for a variety of reasons. I mean, when you have kids, when you have uh, financial pictures that you've built up, sometimes it doesn't make sense from a financial standpoint to remarry. You know, if you get into the technical, they both have Social Security <laughs> benefits from their deceased spouses. And I think because of their age now, they wouldn't necessarily lose them if they were to remarry. But but there are so many other reasons not to remarry. And the fact that he thinks marriage is the ultimate expression of being committed, that's fine. But I think that tells us a lot about Gary. And maybe Teresa is more into that than maybe a Leslie would be. Whereas, yes, let's be committed, but let's have a living apart together relationship. The vibe I get is that Teresa wants to be married. Leslie wants to be with somebody, Mm. which is a very different way of looking at relationships. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right, because... Also, let's just think about this for a moment. (laughs) If Leslie were to marry Gary, what does that mean for her in terms of, I mean, she still has earning power, earning potential. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. What does that mean for her to then, even if she were to live in Indiana part time, what does that mean for her career? You know, whereas Teresa is 70, so she, she probably would retire and then, you know, be Gary's wife, cook him dinner. Um, You know, I thought it was interesting because back when he was talking with Leslie, he was saying, you know, when I'm with someone and I love them, I want to be with them. And he was talking about how they would spend so much time together. And then he said something like, you know, I would let you go, (laughs) you know, if you wanted to for like in between or something. Yeah. And I thought, oh, my God, it sounds like he wants her as a prisoner, a love prisoner. (laughs) So maybe Leslie, please, Leslie, I hope if he does choose Leslie, wouldn't we all love it if she would say, I don't want to marry you. Let's continue this. Let's continue our romance and see how it goes. Can that happen? Has that happened before? I don't know. I'd have to go back and check. But before we're done today, I want to ask you something that I've been kind of thinking about. And maybe it's going too far afield. But when Gary said to Leslie, you may be the one, and I just had to yell at my screen, I started to wonder, like, is Gary a villain? (laughs) What do you think? I really like that question because I think we have all assumed, and we've talked about this a little bit before, that because Gary is older, because he's a widower, we assumed he was a great guy, nice guy genuinely kind as one of my listeners and that um a villain i think he's for me if you were to describe a villain as somebody who has bad intent i don't think he's a villain i would say he's emotionally selfish i would just from what we've seen that it has been all about him, even though he is the star of the show. But as we talked about before, it's very much one-sided, I feel like. that He wants to pick the one who's right for him, not who's going to be my partner. I've never heard the word partner. Who am I compatible with? Yes. Who, who am I going to make happy? Who would be the one that it would be the most fun to go through life together? 
Yeah. So, yeah, villain might be, can you be a benign villain? Is <laughs> An accidental villain, maybe? Yeah. An oops villain? Yeah. No, I think he's very traditional. And, and again, nothing wrong with being traditional. And maybe that is why I really want him to choose Teresa, because I feel like of the two women, Teresa is probably more the traditional when it comes to love and relationships. Well, Laura, we will just have to wait for two whole oh. weeks, unfortunately. And then we will find out in our amazing finale Big. what is going to happen in this mess of a show. But until then, thanks for chatting this out with me. It's been great. I've loved it. That's it for us this week. The Waves is produced by myself, Shayna Roth, and Vic Whitley-Berry. Daisy Rosario is Senior Supervising Producer of Podcasts at Slate, and Alicia Montgomery is Vice President of Audio at Slate. Make sure you check out our regular episodes of The Waves every Thursday, as well as Laura's podcast, Dating Walk Ray, every Thursday as well. We will be back in a couple weeks for the finale of Gary's Quest for Love. Until then, enjoy your turkey if you celebrate, but definitely get your tissues ready for this finale. Okay. I'm so excited to talk about this with you. This was just such an episode. Such an episode. I feel like is what I like say everyone. Okay. <laughs> I'm Laura Stasi, host of the podcast Dating Walk Ray. This week, I found that online dating was a real challenge because I didn't want to put out there, hi, my name is Shannon and I have Parkinson's, but at the same time, I didn't want to hide it. And so a big question for me became, when do you tell someone? Health and Romance, that's this week on Dating While Gray, the grown-up's guide to love, sex, and relationships. Find us and follow wherever you get podcasts. Hey, drag fans, please listen up. I'm Alaska. And my name is Willem. And we are the hosts of Race, race Chaser, Chaser. The premier and preeminent RuPaul's Drag Race recap podcast. And if you aren't listening to this podcasting behemoth yet, start right now. Because it's 2023 and we have weekly coverage of the all new episodes from the season 15 of RuPaul's Drag Race. Every Wednesday, we will discuss, dissect, and, and disseminate, disseminate all of the juiciest moments, wildest runway looks, and the shadiest reality TV twists of the best show on television drag race <laughs> race chaser with alaska and willem is the ultimate backstage pass for both drag obsessives and new fans alike so don't wait find us on your podcast apps and listen check out new episodes of race chaser every wednesday and friday wherever you get your podcasts thank you hey everybody it's tim heidecker you know me tim and eric bridesmaids and uh, fantastic four i'd like to personally invite you to listen to office hours live with me and my co-hosts DJ Doug Pound. Hello. And Vic Berger. Howdy. Every week we bring you laughs, fun, games, and lots of other surprises. It's live. We take your Zoom calls. Music. We love having fun. Excuse me? Songs. Vic said something. Music. Songs. Music. I like having fun. I like to laugh. I like to meet people who can make me laugh. Please subscribe. No.